Good day, Vero Planet listeners. This is Eric Peterson in Salt Lake City. And today it is my honor to be joined by one of my favorites, vocalist of all times, Terry Luce. How are you doing today, Terry? Hi, uh, how are you? Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate that. Of course, it's my pleasure. Um, where are you joining us from today? Uh, somewhere in Los Angeles. Nice. Good for you. <laughs> how? My next question is, how are things down there? Uh, well, with the pandemic, it's a bit, uh, bit crazy. You know, uh, a lot of things are, you know, a lot of people are sick. Uh, I was sick for a while. I had the, I had COVID for a while. Um, so, um, but uh, now I'm okay. And it's a bit crazy, like everywhere else in the country. But uh, I'm very optimistic. So things will pick up and things will get better. So you're you do, you don't have any side effects from it or anything? No. <laughs> <laughs> Good. No, good. Thank God. You know, I am vaccinated and I get the booster. So uh, good. That was a uh, very. Uh, I just had a, a flu, a really strong flu. Okay. Uh, it was. Uh, I was very tired. I have to be honest with you. The big thing is, I was extremely tired. I couldn't believe how tired I was. Um, I couldn't even work out or anything like it. Um, um, but other than that, I was. I was okay. You know. Good. Yeah. I'm good. Grateful. Grateful to be here. Yes. Yes, we all are. Well, it seems like forever ago, and you probably, well, you might remember, but you were my very first interview I had ever done before. Wow. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's been a while ago. We were chatting about uh, Gypsy Dreams, and, uh, and you, were, you were so kind to me as I worked my way through it. And I still right. have to say I love talking to artists, and hopefully I've refined my skills a bit, though. Good. I'm sure. <laughs> Are you doing okay now? Yeah. 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 So it, it was, it was, I was nervous as hell, but you were so good to me. And um, I, I'm grateful for how good you were to me. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, let's talk, let's dive right into Land of Gypsies. I, uh, I, I've listened to it and I just have to tell you that 2022 really needs a road trip album. And this album is it. Um, oh, thank you. The reason I say that is the album doesn't have just one song where you say, wow, that's a great song. It's full of great songs from back to back or like you would, you and I would say side to side. And um, it's just consistently great. And when I listen to it, I picture myself cruising down the desert just jamming this what was what what did you feel like you wanted to accomplish going into this you know i have to be honest with you when we um starting the process it was really um we had no pressure i mean the label didn't put any pressure i didn't feel obligated to i to, to nothing i just said oh i'm just gonna do an album that's it's gonna be fun and and uh, we're gonna do uh, uh i had some songs um serge I, our guitarist had some songs and Fabrizio, the producer, was like, yeah, let me put this together. It's going to be just fine. We really, um, I didn't, you know, sometimes you, you, you go to studio and you put so much pressure on yourself. You're like, oh, my God, I need to deliver the best album ever. Everybody's expecting something. Oh, my God. I have to be honest with you. I went, I went to the studio at 11 o'clock every day, um, you know, talk to Fabrizio about food, mostly, you know, he's Italian, so we talked yeah. about food. Or, How do you cook this? How do you cook that? It's really, it's the truth, you know. We, I, I, I had my guitar, and we're talking about, like, oh, how do you cook this pasta? How do you cook this? Uh, what about you? What do you make when you're on a... We're talking about food, about soccer, about the espresso. We really didn't have the pressure. And then once in a while, he was like, oh, maybe we should do something. Yeah, let's write a song. So I would say, oh, I have this one. How about this one? Nah, how about this one? Oh, it's great. And that was it. Really? Yeah, within a few hours, I was. I had to go home every day to, to pick up my kid from school so early. So I didn't really um, spend a lot of time in the studio, like worried about, oh my God, you know, it just came naturally, you know, just say, here's the song. Do you like it? Yeah, I do. Okay, great. That was it. So I, I just have to say, though, I know your roots go back to, let's see, I want to say Spain. Don't you have some roots? Yeah, roots? yeah. My dad was Spanish. Yeah, and he has some roots in Italy, and he's Italian. So, when you guys talked about soccer, don't tell I it, it didn't get heated at all. <laughs> well, let's just face it, my friend. The French are the world. Okay. So, right. Sorry, I have to say, 
No, I, I don't believe in. I, I don't. I, I respect every team. I respect the Brazilian, uh, the Italian, the Germans, the French. They're all great. Um, Mexicans. They're great team. They just. Um, it was a lot of fun. We didn't. <laughs> Fabrizio would say, "Well, don't let me, don't let me get started. Okay, Terry, you know, don't, don't, don't start, don't start." I'm like, "No, I just want to let you know that we're the European champion and we're the world champion." But now, nah, yeah, you're right. You're better than me. Yeah, it was. He was like, <laughs> "Oh, stop it, stop it." <laughs> it was pretty fun actually, um, but it was really friendly. We never had this thing where it's heated and we hate each other. Yeah. Never. We just joked about it. Uh, the Italians are a great team. The French. German, Brazilian, they're all great. They're all great team. Mexicans, they're all great teams. I love soccer and um, it's passion of mine, but um, you know, it was fun. We mostly talked about food. I have to be honest with you, we talked a lot about food, how to cook this, how to cook that. It's really strange because two grown men talking about food, you know, like Chef Borati, uh, you know, it's pretty yeah. funny. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. So when you when you went into this when you were recording it though you the label knows you from your previous work with X Y Z and stuff they didn't have a sound that they were looking for for you they just said here you go do it they give me carte blanche meaning oh, they said wow. what do you want to do I said um, I'll be interested in working with the frontiers as long as I can do what I what I what I have in mind which is a seventies kind of album something I, I've always wanted to do. Uh, I grew up listening to Humble Pie, you know, Steve Marriott and early Foreigner and early uh, Deep Purple, all of that stuff. And I said, this is what I want to do. I, I don't want to do an 80s album with the big back of vocals, big production. I've done that. I'm not interested in doing that. You, you have other great bands that can do way better than myself because yeah. they, they feel it. I don't feel that kind of thing anymore. I don't want to talk about strip joints and everything. I'm not interested in doing yeah. that. I don't go to Strip Jones anymore. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a dad, you know. So I says, I'm not interested in that, but I still want to rock. Um, so they said, okay. And then they put me in touch with Fabrizio, uh, the producer, who immediately understood the vision. And they said, yeah, I got the perfect musicians for you. And that was it. Because when I, when I listen to the album, I get a... a a foreigner deep purple feel to it. I mean, it has a lot of those songs that I just, I mean, rescue me and an ordinary man. And I mean, long summer day, man, that is the, I love that song. <laughs> I wrote that song. Thank you. I wrote that song um, for somebody else in 2010. Uh -huh. And I had it in my, my hard drive since 2010 and didn't know what to do with it. And it was actually probably the last song I, no, no. The last song was Rescue Me. Uh, the one before uh, last was this one. I, Fabrizio said, do you have another song? I'm like, I might. I played that song and he said, oh, I love the guitar. I love the melody, how you went. I'm like, oh, really? He said, yeah. He said, okay, I want to hear it is. And then, then I talked to uh, Jeff, uh, JK, my partner. And JK immediately said, oh, I have a great idea for lyrics. And uh, I said, all right. And then he came up with the idea Long Summer Day. And, and I said, oh, it's a great idea. So I, I, I wrote the music and the melody and JK wrote the, uh, the lyrics. So, you know, that's the way I work. I usually write music and melody yeah. and I usually have a title for the song. Uh, and for that particular one, I didn't, uh, but usually I have a pretty good idea of, of the melody and the, uh, the arrangement. You know, what I write, I know pretty much the arrangement. Of course, I'm open to to suggestions, but I usually have a pretty good idea of what I want to say and how I want to say it. And then I usually work with JK, a lyricist, or Pat, a great lyricist. Yeah. I like to collaborate. Uh, it's a very interesting, it's a good thing to collaborate, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I always say I love collaborations, especially the one reason I really love collaborations is because they introduce you to new, new artists. You know, you don't you're you listen to somebody and then you hear them collaborate with somebody else and you might not have ever heard of that person so you go listen to what they listen to and you go wow this is really good stuff yeah it, it, especially you know something working with um i have a european phrasing which is a bit different as a singer than an american phrasing mm -hmm. um uh i have a blues type of phrasing which is very laid back uh i, I don't always repeat the melody twice the same way. 
uh, because that's the way I, I that's I listen to Steve Marriott and I listen to those kind of singers, Paul Rogers. They never really had a per se kind of melody that would be you know repeat all the time yeah. exactly the same way uh when i worked with jk my lyricist uh, jk uh, it's, it's more um it's american of course so he said no no you gotta do it this way it's gotta be the same thing all the time and i compromised i'm like all right i'm game let's do it uh, because it's it's writing is about compromising you know yeah. i said okay let's see what you got to say and then automatically i was like oh let's, i love the way you you came up with that melody. He changed the melody a little bit. He says, no, no, do it this way. It's going to be better. I'm like, all right. And then he worked with me and, you know, here we are today. That's, that's, that's really interesting because when you, if you get set in your way, sometimes it's good to break out of that to help you di- yourself discover new things that you might not even have known. A new f- sometimes phrasing. I didn't, there are a couple of uh, sentences I would have sang differently. And thanks to, to JK, um, JK said, no, 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 you got to do it this way. That's that's too European. You got to do it that way. That's more American, like uh, Steven Tyler or whatever. I said, really? He said, yeah. And sometimes I, I was questioning, I was like, I don't know if I want to do that. He's like, no, I'll try it. And I did. And I sent him, because he was in Sacramento and I was in LA. And I would send him the, uh, the recording real fast. I said, what do you think? He's like, oh, it's great. I'm like, you think I do okay with doing that? He's like, oh, yeah, you do great. I'm like, all right, well, let's keep it. And Fabrizio was always like the uh, the referee. He was like, mm, no, nah, yes, no. You know, it was a great referee. Yeah. So it was great, great working with him. What about the other players in the band? I mean, wh- wh- how did you recruit all these guys? Fabrizio. Fabrizio is the glue behind the album. Um, I gave him a lot of credit. I, I, I wrote most of, the mu- most of the music, of course, and Sergey actually came up with some great songs as well. Okay. Um, and JK did the lyrics, but the glue um, was the the producer uh, who actually introduced me to Sergey and and introduced me to AJ and and I knew Eric Eric Ragnio of course, um, but he's the one who, who said let's let's put this and that and this and that. He's a uh, yeah he, he had a vision. He's a great producer, so he's very easy producer to work with. A country. I've worked with many producers and he was by far one of the easiest one to work with, you know? And it was, so you guys actually did go into a studio and record it. Cause it seems like a lot of people now are just doing stuff from their home and then sending it all in and combining it. Everybody has, I have my own studio okay. um, um, uh, where I only record vocals from my house. I don't record drums, but Fabrizio has his own studio and we can, he can record drums, guitars, every, it's a real, big big recording studio so we uh we we worked that way i i would go to work with him it'd be easier because i'm so picky when i sing i could be doing the same song honestly 40 times and 40 times i would take 40 takes and after 40 takes i'm like yeah i don't know you know and but not that's why i wanted to work with the producer because fabrizio i would do three takes and he would say you're done go home I'm like, well, I've only done three takes. He's like, you got it. I'm like, well, I don't know, dude. You know, let me do one more. I was like, all right, one more. And that was the, <laughs> the fun of it. But he said, you know what? Do it. <laughs> what he did before were better. I'm like, okay. So I would do three takes, and and then you, we, we would comp, take one sentence from here, one sentence from there, and that was it. End of the song. You know, uh, it was easier. I, if it was up to me, I'd still be recording the album. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it just shows that you're a perfectionist and you yeah. you take your work very seriously. I mean, that's and that's important in your line of work. You don't want to sound half. You want to sound all you that you want to sound. Yes, but it's good. Yes, but it's good to have a, a referee. Yeah. Um, the producer is to say the, the final say so because the referee is going to say, OK, guys, enough. You know, go back to your corner. <laughs> So, so looking at what he did for you and then going back in your career, do you see producers that were similar to him or do you see some producers that were, that does it, how does he compare to some of the others that you've worked with? I think, I think he's the closest to, to someone I've worked, my mentor, George Tutko. Uh, George Tutko was my mentor. He's the one who gets me the record deal and all that stuff. And, George was just like that. He would, 
George would say, okay, three takes, one, two, three, you're done, go home. I'm like, that's it? He's like, you're done. I said, what if I want to just, I'll call you later. And I would literally go to the other room and, um, and drink a cup of coffee or watch TV for 20 minutes. And then George would come and say, come in the room, listen to that. I say, okay, he would come to track. And I say, what do you think? He says, well, we got it, except that line you got to redo. Uh, this one um, sound too French. <laughs> you want to always say that. <laughs> uh, this one, you, gotta, uh, you can do better. And that's it. So I would do, all right. So I would do the thing. And so Fabrizio is the closest thing to, uh, to um, George Tutko. It doesn't mean the other producers were no good, by the way. Yeah. I worked with great producers. I worked with Michael Wagner, who was a great producer. Yeah. I worked with Nick Kernan, great producer. Don Docker, great producers. Um, and I worked with uh, other producers uh, in, in my life, you know, uh, 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 but uh, as far as that particular album, this particular album, I think the closest thing was George Tutko, you know, I would say, you know. Yeah. Uh, I have the pleasure of working with one of the most amazing producers in the world, Giorgio Moroder, who produced uh, uh, Donna Summer and, uh, and, uh, and so, many, so many huge bands, I mean. Yeah. Like, so I worked with him and it was actually easy. I just did my take. He's like, great, you're done, go home. I would say it's same same way. <laughs> like, okay. I mean, that that's that's interesting to know, never have been involved in something like that, to know that producers have a certain way that they want, they know, they know their vision and they know your talent. And so they know when they've they've got what they need. Yeah, I've worked with producers, for example, that um, for voiceover or for a certain, for uh, jingles that I've done, whatever, or, or songs that I, I've written or sang for movies. Um, producer would say, okay, well, that particular line, I want you to do, mm, mm. for example, I'm saying, mm -hmm. you want to hear, mm, mm. yeah, okay, so I would do that, that. Now do again, and then change that line to, mm, mm, mm. whatever, I'm just making this up, yeah. you know. And I'm like, it would take the fun out of it. I was like, oh man, really? You know? <laughs> and and they have that, but the result was good also, you know. Yeah. I don't blame them. They had a vision, you know. Uh um I, I'm more of a freestyle type of singer, meaning I go in the studio and I feel the vibe. I, it comes natural to me. I, I'm not like a, I don't overthink things. Oh my God, I got to get that note or whatever. I have no idea what I'm going to do when I go in studio. So most of the time, I don't even have the lyrics in front of me. Most of the time, I'm like, oh, gee, I need, I need to write the lyrics real fast. So I call Jeff, hey, just write the lyrics. And most of the time, I'm like, oh, okay, this one, that, that line doesn't work. Uh, hey, Jeff, just change that line, doesn't work. You know, I really, I remember going to, to working with Michael Wagner when I arrived at the studio. Michael said, okay, let me see the lyrics. I'm like, I don't have them yet. He said, you're telling me that you're going to start recording in three days and you have no lyrics? I'm like, nope. <laughs> what are you going to talk about? I'm like, no idea. And he said, I've never worked with anybody like that in my life. And I'm like, when I still want to work, I don't know. I like pressure or um, I'm going to go in my room and I'll, I'll get them. And that was it. I would get the job done. But um, producers are very important. They really... Uh, can make an album way better or they can actually trash an album yeah you know yeah. so producers are choosing the right producer is really really important yeah yeah so on based on all this that we've talked about and the the success of this is there something you would like to do live absolutely um i've talked to uh to uh frontiers about that and i'm getting a lot of requests and lots of no, you know, I'm, I'm game. If I get a good offer, I'll go on the road. You know, Fabrizio will go on the road. We'll go on the road. We'd love to play, you know, of course, you know. I, yeah. I love to play for the fans and and I'll, you know, I'll, in, of course, include a couple of songs from my, from my catalog as well, you know. Yeah. You know, um, maybe some XYZ or whatever, you know. But um, absolutely, I'll, I'll be looking forward to, to doing more dates, you know, with that particular, uh, you know. That would be fun. I would love to see this live because it, it has, I mean, it's, as good as it sounds on album, I can't imagine how it would sound live because it would just, there's so much guitar in it and there's so much vocally in it that it seems like it's meant to be live. Thanks. Well, live would be actually cool because 
uh, Serge is a great guitar player. He's a really good guitarist, and uh, would be very, uh, very seventies, very humble. Yeah. Pie. yeah, very humble pie. Very uh, uh, not a huge production. Not just not tons of of overdubs and backup vocals. It's really honestly, it was kind of a live kind of thing. Uh, the drums were recorded super fast. One bass track. Uh, couple of guitars here and there. There's really not a big production, like a Def Leppard type of, type of a production, which is, by the way, great. It's a great yeah. production. We were not aiming for that. We were aiming for something really organic. Yeah. You know? But, so it sounds like, based on your your style of perfection, if it was you, you would be, you would be Mutt Lang and you would be in the, you would be in the studio for a year. <laughs> yes. I mean, I, I, I admire Mutt Lang. I would love to work with Mutt Lang. I think he's a, He's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant producer, but I would be scared to work with him because I'm probably going to be like him thinking, uh, you know, that note, I don't know. Let me yeah. do it again. And I would be like doing, again, I remember recording, I uh, did a song not so long ago for one of my projects. I did 40 takes, 40 <laughs> takes. And after listening to 40 takes, I'm like, I was completely out of it. I'm like, I don't know if it sounds good. So you know what I did? I erased everything. Wow. Everything. He didn't even bother listening to the, to the, I'm like, yeah, I'll come back tomorrow. Next day I did the same thing. I did maybe 20. Finally, I called a buddy of mine, Tony, Tony Phillips. I'm like, Tony, I'm lost. He's like, let me hear what you have. He's like, you're done. Don't even touch anything. You're done. I'm like, you think so? He's like, oh my God. You know, I was like, yeah, the first take is the best one. I'm like, oh, okay. So we ended up keeping the first take, the very first one. Wow. Actually, almost from beginning to end. We just changed a couple of lines and that was it. So... So moving on, I just wanted to ask you about XYZ and what's happening in that realm of your life. Yeah, Pat and I have written a bunch of songs. They're ready to go. We just, um, we're looking for the, uh, the right um, label we don't, okay. to actually distribute the stuff. Um, so, you know, there's no more labels like, like back in the days, like CBS, and yeah. Capital Records. And rock is very different nowadays, you know, um, labels don't want to pursue rock unless you're like a major, major star. So, and even that, you know, nobody buys anything, but I wouldn't say nobody buys. I, I'm, I would say that fans are there. Yeah. The labels are not there anymore, but fans mm -hmm. want to hear music. Fans want to, uh, uh, want to go to concerts. Fans are there. There's no doubt about it. It's just the labels are no longer supporting our kind of music, yeah. you know? Uh, so I'm grateful to, to, to be doing an interview with you be grateful to be doing uh, interviews with all those journalists and having people like yourself giving us um, the nods, giving us credit. You know, I, I'm grateful because you you are helping um, um, uh, you are helping us a lot. You know, helping the fans and helping the artists. So thanks to you. So so you guys have M3, correct? You're playing M3 this year. Yeah. And then do you have any other dates? Uh, yeah. Monsters of Rock, correct? Yeah, most of the rock and empty. We um, we just about we we're just about to change agency, touring agency. Okay. Um. So um, dates will come. We we okay. took us it took us a while to change agencies. We were not uh, certain, and then we were not so concerned about touring, whatever. But now we have decided to to make the move. So uh, I think things are gonna get much better. Nice, nice. So and and then as your touring agency changes, I mean, you've seen these changes go on throughout the years, even through touring. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing how much things change through the years. And as far as touring records, record deals and all that kind of stuff, what would you say today that you like better than you did back in the old day? I don't know if I like anything better nowadays. I'm really? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I like to think about that. I'm not, I don't know how to answer to that question. Uh, back in the days, we were touring the big bus. Let me think. Big bus, big arenas, um, thousands of people. Um, I think the difference is nowadays we get closer to the fans. And that's yeah. the major positive difference. Um, I get to talk to so many fans online. It's amazing. People send me emails on, on Facebook and Instagram all the time. And I always take the time to reply. So that's one positive thing about, about what's happening today is the fact that fans and artists are much closer 
Yeah. There's no such thing as the rock star thing. Uh, I mean, at least not for me. You know, I'm, I've never considered myself a rock star. I've always considered myself an artist and lucky one. Um, but um, we get closer to the fans. We, we, you know, that's one very, very positive thing. Uh, back in the days we were playing the arenas, we didn't, I didn't even know who was there, who was not there. People would send me letters. I mean, never read those letters. I would never get them most of the time because they were in a bag somewhere at my management company. Um, as of nowadays, things are different. People can reach me or they send me a message on, on, the, on Facebook. It's, hey, Jerry, what's going on? And I reply, oh, how are you doing, buddy? So, and, and that's one of the things I, ha- I admire about you is you're very, you're very active on social media. And I mean, I, I see you on, I follow you on social media and you're very active and you, you post videos from the airport, you post videos all over the place and you're very, which brings you down to earth, which I think people like. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm a very down to earth kind of dude. I'm not, I don't have, I don't have that rock star mentality. I never had, uh, I'm a musician. I'm an artist. Uh, and I, I, what I mean by artist, I'm, it's not pretentious at all. I just like to create. An artist is someone who creates. That's the way I'm trying to say. It's what I'm trying to say. I like to create music. I like to create art. I like to create videos, anything related to art in general. Mm-hmm. So um, I never considered myself a rock star type because for me, I, I don't know. I, I like to talk to the fans. I like to take pictures of the fans and ask questions about Oh, how's it going on with you? You know, and sometimes it's, and I just I don't know. I know so many of my fans, honestly, and I know a lot of my friends would will be listening to this uh, uh, interview, and they'll say, "Yeah, I know Terry well." You know, blah blah blah. You know, I just I just like it. I like it that way. You know, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, I agree. It's it's nice to have for me as a as a fan. It's nice to have you feel that personal connection where you say. If I comment or ask him a question, I know he's going to answer. It's not going to be, he's not going to be the guy that just ignores it. No, I appreciate that. So, so, well, I appreciate your time. I'm sure. Do you have another interview after this? Yeah, right now at six o'clock. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll, uh... I, have one, I have one every half hour. It's just oh, amazing. Really? Okay. Every, well, uh, Dustin, our, our, my, my PR guy, he's been kicking butt and uh, he gives me interviews and um, I, have well, a I wanted to wish you and your daughter your my best because I know your daughter's a special part of your life and yeah. I see her as part of your social media. So I just wanted to wish you both your best and I look forward to seeing you hopefully live again or hanging out with you. So I appreciate that. Anything you need, just ask, okay? Okay. And you, you everybody know. go pick up this new album. It's great. So thank you. I appreciate that.